Good day everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are recreating an 1860s chemise for my wedding. Hello and welcome. So we are here to work on a chemise today uh, for my wedding ensemble. So it's based it off an original 1860s chemise that I own, um, an accident one, which I'll show you in a little bit. But for right now, let's go ahead and start. I have the pieces cut out already. I went ahead and drafted them. And um, this is the front. I cut a, according to the original, a five inch slit down this very center front. And we are going to sew this down. So I did a um, eighth of an inch and then three eighths of an inch um, on the left side, just like the original. And then a one eighth inch and a two eighth inch on the right side. Um, just like the original. So it's really a half inch seam allowance total on the left and a three eighths on the right. And just like with the drawers last month, we are using that original 1907 machine. And I'm using this because this is the machine that my great grandfather got for my great grandmother as a wedding gift when they got married in the 1920s. So we're using it to show my uh, wedding ensemble stuff. that stays I'm gonna actually tie that off in a bit. Actually you know what might as well do it now. I need to get some better light over here. I'm gonna pull the top and the bottom thread to the wrong side and I'm just gonna tie it off. And this will keep the seam from un from raveling. What we did before there were back stitching machines. Okay, now that is going to end up being caught in something else. I'm not worried about that raveling as much. Okay, now the other side. Actually, I gotta think about that. Um, debating on whether I want to do the tucks first on this front since we're already here, or I want to go ahead and sew the sleeves on. I think it's gonna be best to do tucks first. I'm gonna go measure those and we'll be back. Alrighty, so working on the tucks now. So here's the original. I have it out just to measure. So what we're doing now are the tucks in here. Oops, y'all can't really see the tucks. So um, what she did is she did a larger tuck, five smaller tucks, and a larger tuck. And her tucks measure just under three eighths of an inch, and then the five eight inch ones, and then and then another. Um, just a hair shy of three eighths again. And then she has an inch, a half inch gap and she does it again, half inch gap, she does it again. So, um, if y'all watched the drawers video last time, you'll know that's not exactly how I ended up doing it. Uh, my measurements were off when I did the tucks. And so what I ended up with was a solid three inch, three eighths inch one three quarter inch ones because I did not measure correctly and then another three eighths inch one. So um, we're doing it a little bit differently. We're going to match the drawers instead of exactly matching this. So um, let me show you. I have one side completely done and it's this side. So this is what it's looking like. So there's the large one, two, three smaller ones, larger one, half inch gap. 
I, because I guess the width of my fabric is different than hers and I'm taking slightly more, even with my three instead of five, I couldn't do the three here and still have space over here for the sleeve. So I had to do the uh, three eighths inch, one quarter, one quarter, one quarter, three eighths, half inch gap, three eighths, just one of the quarter ones, then the three eighths again, half inch gap, three eighths, one quarter, one quarter, one quarter, three eighths. So just because of measuring purposes, I had to do mine slightly differently. But on this side, I have um, the five and then three. So we're gonna measure for the last five. And let's see, for this particular one, it is about, oops, that would be the wrong end of my thing here. We're at, um, just below two inches, just shy of two inches. Okay. That would be this way. It's been a long day. Okay. I'm going to need to do the half inch gap. So let's do for this measurement. I need the half inch gap, the three eighths inch of the under pleat, under the pleat, and then the and I just kind of pin that in going over to my machine. about tying all this excess off because I'm just going to cover it with a little bit of bias in just a second. So there's that one. I think the last one is about, yeah, about one and a half inches. So we're going to do about one and three quarters, I think, for this one. And measure up Three-eighths inch and two-eighths two for the actual pleat. And that's just basically how this goes. to do and then I have a um, another three inch to do at which point I'm going to iron all of it down and I'm going to pin a little strip of bias and we're going to just kind of put it in there and I'll show you how to do that in a minute when we get to that. Alright so we're here putting this little bias band. I just cut a two inch strip in half so it's an inch wide and then I just folded it where there's no more raw edges. So it's about half an inch wide now, a little less, about three eighths of an inch. So I'm just kind of measuring this to make sure I'm measuring and getting to the right point since it's three quarters. Okay, so that's three eighths of an inch. And just, I'm gonna cut this off. So this end, that end was just folded under. This end, according to the original, gets folded underneath the tuck. There we go, just like that. Okay, so this is going to get machine stitched on just at the very edge all the way across. At which point we're going to put on sleeves and attach the back. Okay, so I have the sleeves attached. So it's front sleeve, back sleeve, front. So it's all attached now. And uh, we're just going to iron this down to fill this seam. So I filled the seam. I cut the bottom one down about halfway. And we're folding that raw edge under. So that it finishes all the edges. Makes them nice and neat. And we're going to sew it again. Just 
focus on this edge to make sure it stays down. And then we'll work on the next step, which is doing the side seams. <clears throat> All right, I'm sewing up the side seams, so I literally just, you know, attach the sleeve. It's all one piece now. So sleeve down straight down to the hem. And um, then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so it is now hemmed and I'm putting on the lace or edging at the um, sleeves. And I'm gonna fill this as well. At which point I'm going to gather the back and then we'll put the edging on the neck. edging pinned on. I basically just, um, I took one of my other chemises that has an embroidered edge and I measured around it and that's how I came up with how long I needed the ribbon to be or the uh, edging. has one button and buttonhole at the very top and um, I'm thinking about doing two just so it's a little bit more secure. All right working on the buttons and buttonholes finishing up the project and the original only had a button at the very top. I'm opting to put one also halfway down just so there's not a gap. Plenty of other originals with more than one button. And finish the buttonhole real quick and we'll be done. Alright, 
So we have a completed little chemise. So like last month, I'm not going to try it on. I'm going to not try any of this on until it's all done, basically. So we'll do it all together in the debuting video. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the original and we'll see them side by side. And here we are. So both chemises. I mean, clearly these have wider pleats than this one does or tucks. Um, I do kind of like the smaller text better, but I'm happy with how it turned out overall. And yeah, I'm I'm very glad with how it turned out. And I'll match the drawers really well. It's um, a functional chemise, so I'm quite happy with it. And it's been a really long time since I've made 1860s underpinnings. It's been at least six, seven years, I think. Um, I made the, all the drawers and chemises I have now, I made them all at the same time. And I haven't made any since, and they lasted me that long, and they still have good good life left in them. So this one will get used for many years to come after the wedding. But I think that's about it. I mean, not a whole lot to say. It's just a little chemise, but I'm glad we got it done. I think it looks great. Um, I did not end up um, gathering up here. I could have. I mean, the original pleated or gathered up there. I decided to leave it plain. Um, that was just personal choice. I could have done it either way. I've seen originals either way. I just would rather not have a, um, a big gathered sleeve on this one. So I, I made that decision to not be like the original, but other than that, they're both beautiful little schmoozes and in their own way anyway. So I'm glad I got a functioning schmooze out of this and now I can go into the Hope chest with the drawers, and we can start working on a corset next month. That's gonna be fun. I haven't done one of those in a while. I'm gonna draft my own pattern for this, and I've not drafted myself a corset pattern in a really long time, so that should be very interesting. But overall, I'm pleased with how this project turned out, and I'm looking forward to the next one and to the ones after that as well. So I actually had to put the chemise up now because we actually don't need her anymore. We've got both the underpinnings done. Um, and I mean, I still went to the pleats like this in the petticoats, but I don't need the shoes off of that. So we'll just go ahead and put her up and not worry about it. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me today as we made our little reconstructed 1860 shimmies for my wedding. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Click that little bell notification so you're notified anytime there's a new video uploaded on the channel. And as always, have a fantastic week and I'll see you back here on Monday.